we have a quadratic equation and we're going to need the x-intercepts. So let's start out with what is a quadratic equation and how do we get the intercepts, which are also known as the roots or the solutions. So the most common way you're going to see a quadratic equation is in the form of, oh, excuse me, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a and b are coefficients, so they're normal numbers. So a over here is 1, b is 5. c is going to be our constant or y-intercept. It's going to be the 4 here. And then the x's are the variables. So one way to get the intercepts, and you're probably familiar with this, is through the quadratic equation, which is negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. But I wouldn't use this method. The SAT is about solving equations and solving problems in the fastest and the easiest way pro possible and actually understand the equations. And this is more of a plug and chug method where you just plug in the coefficients. So more often than not, there's gonna be an easier way to do it that involves factoring. So what does that look like? With factoring, you're gonna to wanna to get a number that multiplies or the two numbers that, whose product is C and whose sum the numbers are gonna add up to B. So multiply to C and add to B. And once we get that, our answer is going to look like this. We're going to have X plus number one times X plus number two. And again, these two numbers are going to multiply to C and they're gonna to add to B. So now that we know how to do this problem, let's take a crack at it. So I'll start by rewriting our equations and we know we need the distance between the intercepts, so we gotta find the intercepts. We got x squared plus five x plus four. So we need a number that multiplies to four and adds to five, and those two numbers are gonna be four and one, because four times one is four, four plus one is five. And then we factor our equation to x plus four times x plus one, set that equal to zero. Now to solve for the roots, we set each of these equal to zero. x plus four equals zero, subtract four from both sides, we get x equals negative four. And then our other x-intercept would be x plus one equals zero. Subtract one from both sides, we get x equals negative one. And here it wants the distance between the two intercepts. We have negative four and negative one, and we know the distance between them is three. So C is going to be our answer. Now that we've solved that one, let's bring up another problem involving factoring. So here we got an equation, and it says, where is this expression undefined. And we know undefined equations occur when the denominator is zero. So what we need to do is find when this expression here, the quadratic equals zero. Again, I'll start by rewriting it over here, x squared plus three x minus 10. And we need a number that multiplies to 10, or to negative 10 rather, and adds up to three. And I'm gonna get, let's see, five and negative two. It's five times negative two is negative 10 and five minus two is three. So our factored form is gonna be x plus five times x minus two. And again, set that equal to zero. And our roots are gonna be negative five and two. Because x plus five equals zero. Subtract five, get negative five. Here, x minus two equals zero. Add two to both sides, get x equals two. So negative five and two. Look at our answers. They only give us two, they don't give us negative five, so D is going to be our answer. Now, moving on to another topic. Another way that they're gonna show you the quadratic equation is in vertex form, and we can see those down here. And that looks something like this. We have A times X minus H squared plus K. What does that mean? So what it's giving us here is notation that shows us the vertex, and we get that with the negative h and the k. Here, our vertex is going to be h comma k. And you have to be careful here, because
because even though it's a minus h, our vertex is still a positive h here. So if it were a plus h, it would be a negative h. So watch out for that. And using that information, we can identify which equation suits this function. So if we look at the vertex, they give it to us, we know it's 3, 1. So if we write our own little equation, we have a times x minus 3. So even though it's positive 3, it's minus 3 in the notation, squared, plus, and then we got the 1. So if we look at our answers, we want all the ones with minus 3. This one has plus 3, so it's not b. This one has plus 3, so it's not d. And we're left with 2. Now we're looking for the coefficient. And here I would just plug in 4 and see which one gives us 5. So the first one we plug in 4, 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 squared is 1, 1 times 4 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. So that one works, so it would be A. If you tried to do it with this one, you would just get 1 plus 1, which is 2, so that one wouldn't work. Let's move on to some more questions involving the vertex. We got this one over here, I'm sorry it's a little bit smaller just because it's such a large question. This one, it gives us the formula for a quadratic equation, and it asks us which one represents it in the picture. So first, we can look at the roots. So we got negative three, and we're gonna have a positive k, because we set these both equal to zero to get the roots. So we got the negative three, so we know one is gonna cross the axis at negative three. That's what the meaning of root or x-intercept is, is that it crosses the x-axis there. So this one crosses the axis at negative three, that works. This one crossed at negative two, so that one doesn't work. This one also crossed at negative two, that doesn't work. And this one crosses at negative three, so it does. Now we look back up. So we have x times x, if we were to uh, foil it out. So we know it's gonna be a positive coefficient in front of the x squared, meaning the function is going to move upwards. So that's gonna give us d, because the function will be increasing. Now looking at this one, they give us the equation in vertex form. It says, which of the following is true about the parabola? And it's asking us for the vertex and if it's a min or a max. So first, if we look at the coefficient, we see that it's negative, meaning it's gonna open down. And that means we're gonna have a maximum. So we wanna cross out all the ones that don't have maximum. Then if we look at the notation, we're gonna see that our vertex is gonna be three comma a. We're gonna look for three comma a right there, and that's gonna be our answer. So again, an equation that has a positive coefficient like this one, because there's both positive x's, it's gonna open upwards and have a minimum, and one that has a negative coefficient is gonna open downwards and have a maximum. Now moving on, we have difference of squares with quadratic equations. So we see the x squared, we see a u squared here, but it's in a little bit of a different format. And anytime you see the difference of squares, so say it's x squared minus, it's, it's gonna be another squared number. So you're gonna have a squared number here and a number that's squared here. What does that mean? You're gonna have maybe one because one times one is one. You could have four because two times two is four. You could have nine, three times three is nine, 16 because four times four is 16 and so on. So any number that's a perfect square works in the scenario. We have x squared minus that perfect square. I just wrote s to represent that. You can factor it in the form of x minus s times x plus s. And that's gonna work for any time you have a difference of squares. And really anytime you see a difference of squares in any question, you're almost always gonna to wanna to factor it. So let's work on these two. first one it says what are all the values of x that satisfy the equation so we see we've got an x squared minus 1 and this is a perfect square so we can factor the top to be x minus 1 times x plus 1 we'll fill in the rest we got x minus 1 at the bottom and it equals negative 2 and now we see the same term on the top and the bottom so we can cancel we're going to get x plus 1 equals negative 2 subtract 1 from both sides and we get x equals negative three. So a is gonna be our answer. This next one down here, they give us u plus t equals five and u minus t equals two. So we see that they're giving us the factors of a perfect square here. And it wants the value of 
this expression down here. So u minus t they give us, that's two. And then they give us u squared minus t squared. And we see that's the difference of squares. And they also give us the factors here. So all we know is that this is gonna be five times two, which is 10. We multiply those and we get 20 as our answer. So again, we're using the difference of squares in this notation. Anytime you have a squared value here and a perfect square here, you're gonna to wanna to write it in the form of x minus the square times x plus the square. And the SAT likes these a lot, and anytime you see them, you almost always wanna factor it like that. And now our last topic are just general features of quadratic equations and what they mean, so how you can interpret the equation. This first one gives us the equation, gives us the picture, and it says if this graph crosses the y-axis at point zero k, what is the value of k? So here we see k is when x is zero, and that is gonna be the intercept. That is what c means. That means when x is zero, you get this value. And you can even plug in zero to get that. If you plug in zero here, that would cross out. Plug in zero here, that's gone, and you're left with just 12. And d is our answer. So again, c is always gonna be the y-intercept, and that means what you get for y when x is zero. And the last piece of information here, we got another equation, and this one is asking about the x-intercept. It says the quadratic function models the height above ground h in feet of a projectile x seconds after it's been launched vertically. The equation is graphed in the xy plane, which of the following represents the real meaning of the positive x-intercept of the graph. So here we're asking for the x-intercept. So we got a negative quadratic equation here. So we know it looks like this. And what the x-intercept means is where this crosses the x-axis. So the x-intercepts would be here and here. So what does that mean in this model? It's gonna be either where we start or where we end. So the initial height of the projectile, that could work. The maximum height, that's not true. That's gonna be the vertex. The time at which the projectile reaches its maximum height, again, that's the vertex. And D is the time at which the projectile hits the ground. So that could be feasible too. So here we just need to see, are we looking for what the x-intercept is, or are we gonna be looking for what h is? And if we see it's asking for the x-intercept, which is gonna be the input, and the input in this one is going to be time. So the intercept is going to be, and the answer is going to be the time at which the projectile hits the ground. Because we're looking for the input and where it crosses.